Taking off tomorrow, what's the what's the feel around here? It feels exciting. I mean, there's, there's really no other way to put it. We're all excited. I think the, the biggest thing for me is watching how these guys have grown over the last uh, six, seven months after the last uh, season ended. You know, they worked their butts off in the classroom. They worked the butts off in the weight room and here in the indoor facility. They have uh, worked to do exactly what we asked them to do. And each and every one of them knows that uh, you know, there, there is no tomorrow, there is no next year. It's, it's right now. We're working to do things right now. It doesn't matter that our staff is, you know, is only one year into this, you know, into this, uh, this tenure. You know, it's, it's the fact that we have opportunities in front of us. So, uh, the, the, the biggest thing on top of that is, watch, is watching how well they've gotten along together. I mean, to watch the relationships that they've built with each other. You can see how much harder they've worked in the offseason, especially this summer. Uh, how much they've pushed each other, how much they've worked for each other. That's been the most exciting thing for me. And I'm really excited to see how that translates once the practice for For the guys that are coming back from a season ago, uh, what have you seen from them that they're taking the next step? Is it leadership? Is it, is it work ethic? The, the biggest thing, I think, is the leadership. You know, Watch all those guys are taking the reins, uh, especially guys like Kevin Murphy, uh, Marche Terry, Matt Perk. Uh, all those guys have, have taken it upon themselves, and, and we've certainly you know, worked to foster that uh, within the team, not just the older guys, but everybody. You know, everyone can be a leader. Uh, but those guys have really taken the reins, and, and, and they understand now that it is their team, and, and they're, they're taking those steps to make sure that it, that it goes the way that they want it to go. A guy like Caleb Thomas, what makes him so uh, pr productive, talented in the middle? His natural, natural ability, number one. Yeah. Uh, but number two, again, his work ethic. He works to do everything that we ask him to do. You know, he's always he's no, been no. extremely coachable. Look at the which is best to him, his family, yeah. his coaching staff, that uh, school at Mansfield. Uh, you know, he's uh, not, again, not, as, not only is he physically talented, he's, he's smart. You know, he, just, he has a great feel for the game. You know, he's, he's the kind of player you want to have. Coach Essel was just talking about some of the freshmen coming in uh, for a very talented freshmen. I see you smiling. Uh, what? What impresses you about them, and what can they do on the defensive line? I, I think the biggest thing that impresses me about them is their work ethic. You know, every last one of them. Uh, they all came in, and, and I was really, really impressed right from day one, from the first practice that they had, and how well they kept up with the returning players. You know, they didn't fall behind. We're next. The leg, which is something that's typical for, for true freshmen, you know, first year players when they get the, the returning players were already here for almost the month. And they had to come in and play catch up. I mean, there wasn't a lot of catch up when we they, they were working while they were not here by themselves. And obviously, some of them were working out with trainers or with teammates or friends, um, but it's a, it's a completely different atmosphere than working out with the team in, in the facility and with the strength coaches here. So that was the biggest thing that impressed me. I mean, they're all physically talented, they're all, uh, they all have the size to, to be able to contribute. Uh, I think they're going to definitely make our defensive line unit a lot deeper and they just add to the competition. Do, do each have a set uh, position? at this point or, or is that evaluation still on? It's the evaluation it's going to be on going. I mean, not just for them I think really for uh, some other guys mm -hmm. on the defensive line. I mean, we, we pretty much know what they can do mm -hmm. but because we have some numbers now we may be able to mix and match some guys and, and maybe kind of tweak the defense and, and, and not so much the schematics but what we do with those guys and, and, and kind of just change up based on who's in to try to allow them to be as successful as they can possibly be. The defensive line in the 3-3-5 system, how is that different compared to a 4-3? It's different in that you, you have your two defensive ends on the interior of the defensive line pretty much. You, you, those guys are four eyes from they're in the B-gap, uh, and, and really it, it kind of messes with offensive blocking schemes, especially for, for most, you know, you look at most offensive lines, they're used to either seeing an odd front, zero, two fives, or they're seeing an even front, you know, two interior guys and two edge guys. So it gives them a different look, uh, which, which for us, you know, it just gives us the ability to play a little bit faster. If they've got to think more, that's better for us. We can react a little bit faster and play a little bit harder. But the thing I really like is that schematically, no matter what you're doing, no matter what you're, no matter what plays you're seeing, it, it kind of takes away from those double teams that you're able to, to utilize when you're playing against the four down line. And then. Uh, you talk double teams. Is there a lot of roles or responsibility of attracting double teams to free up space for linebackers to go make plays? I mean, for us, our responsibility is to get off the ball, go cause havoc, go knock back, and, and reestablish the whole that we like to talk about. So if we're doing that, mm -hmm. then we are eating up double teams. We are eating up blocks. What about a guy like Ryan Fines? Is his position set? He, he can play inside, outside the seams? He's, he's got the size to play either one, inside or outside. You know, it, it, it'll probably depend on how well he plays, and we'll probably 
they have him doing both, mm -hmm. and, and we'll see what he is most successful at. And then it'll also come down to what the other need is. Is, is he the best nose? Is he the best end? Or is he? Or are we going to be better if he's playing end because somebody else is a better nose? You know what I mean? So it'll come down to you know, we'll kind of play a chess game with him and, and let the pieces fall where they fall. Opening night against UCF, is that a chance to really prove how far this program's come since here? Absolutely. Ago? I mean, you're talking about an undefeated uh, program. Obviously, it's not the same team because there's some guys mm -hmm. that are gone. New coaching uh, staff. Coaching staff is yeah. gone. So, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna have a different look. They'll be. Uh, They'll be a different team personnel-wise, but it's still UCF. They're, they're going to come in with a lot of pride. They're going to come in wanting to uh, wanting to establish their dominance. You know, they know that uh, we're going to. It's going to be a home game, just like every single coaching staff and every single team says, "Hey, we got to protect our house." So they they know that they're going to come into a hostile environment. I mean, for us, it's going to be about us doing what we're capable of doing. You know, we're not going to look to to measure ourselves against anybody else. We're going to look to measure ourselves against ourselves and make sure that we're playing to the best of our ability.